Hi, welcome to valuationpodcast.com, a podcast and video series about all things related to business and valuation. My name is Melissa Gregg, and I provide online divorce, mediation, and valuation services in St. Louis, Missouri. Today, we will discuss how exit planning is not what you think with Scott Snyder. Scott is the president of Exit Planning Institute, EPI, and the operating partner of Snyder Premier Growth, a small family investment company in Westlake, Ohio. This kind of goes towards like what, what the marketplace needs and what the opportunities are out there mm -hmm. is the reality is, are they prepared to sell the, I mean, even at that point, they have an active buyer that's willing to pay them what they want. Their, their house is not in order. Everything is not cleaned up. And now they're doing it as a frenzy, right? And they're their like books are not cleaned up. They're, and when we say clean up the books, I mean, like, start to run like your business cleaner. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. exactly. But talk right. to us about the marketplace need and opportunity, because maybe that's a little bit different than what we're envisioning it means. No, I think that, uh, so right now, I guess generally the marketplace right now, I think is pretty hot, right? I was just mm -hmm. like, not to set the tone for any business owner, so please don't take my advice as real as, as what you're gonna get. But a guy here in Cleveland just sold a non-medical home healthcare company for 20 times EBITDA. Yeah. So I think that right now the market's hot, however, if you're listening and saying, crap, I just heard Scott say that, I might wanna think about going to market. I'm gonna call my CPA or my attorney friend and see maybe if I could actually sell now because as a 60 year old, that might sound pretty good right now. But what you're gonna find is that you're actually might be very attractive, but you're really not ready at all, right? It's all, I always call it, it's like picture your favorite car. So I'm a car guy, picture, say you have the brand new Mercedes Benz, 2022, zero miles Let's on it. like Maserati. Maserati, whatever your thing is, right? Whatever yeah. your thing is, you're looking at this and you're like, this thing looks beautiful. Say it's a hundred thousand dollar car. It's a big deal for you. Bucket list kind of item. And you're like, okay, I'm definitely going to buy this thing. I just want to take it out for a ride. So you sit down, you hit the little push start button and nothing even turns over. So you go in and pop the hood or pop the trunk if it's a rear engine. And you're like, this thing's not ready to be driven at all. There's no engine in it. So even though it looked really cool, right. when I got into it, it wasn't very ready. And again, that readiness could be because your business isn't, isn't ready or it because you're not ready. I think like owners cold feet, like kill deals all the time. They get all the way to the end and they're like, holy crap, I just spent the last 35 years of my life growing this company. I can't possibly think, like, what, what would I do without this thing? Um, and I think it goes back to some of the stuff we talked about too, or they say, maybe I am a little bit ready, but I'm unsure and untrusting what this new company might do with my people my customers, my culture, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think that, you know, the mar marketplace and the opportunity question, I think that right now it's really hot. So if you are thinking about selling your business, you should probably start an exit planning journey, right. which typically takes three to five years. But, you know, and what I would say, it, it also is, I think, generation dependent and all that kind of stuff. And I love talking about the generations, but it's probably another podcast. So... <laughs> Well, but I think you have a good point because it it's never the first thing that I hear, you know, because mm -hmm. like when we're talking about a deal, it doesn't seem real. Like we're negotiating the LOI, we're negotiating the terms and the business owner is still like, mm, it's like a wish and a prayer, right? Like yeah. I'm just going to, and we yeah. tell them like, keep on running your business. We'll negotiate and, and, but you need to keep on because it's, it's a lot, it's emotional, but they don't figure it out at the beginning. And they don't even get it in the middle. It's towards when it starts to become real. And we're starting to give bank accounts. And we're starting to determine where escrow is going to sit. And we're getting right. the wire information for the millions of dollars that is going to be put into their bank account. That they literally sit back. And I kid you not, it's almost 100% of the time, right? And they sure. sit back and they're like, Melissa, Scott, what am I going to do? Like even right. day one, like week one, and they literally go into this like sense of like they've never thought about it until here because they were running so fast, running so fast, running so fast that they're like, I don't like everybody says I should go like drink margaritas on the beach. But like, I don't even like sand. I don't even like warm yeah. weather, you know, like. Right, exactly. And well, they do, well, yeah, they have this epiphany totally of like, agree. what do I do? Yeah, no, I totally agree. It's kind of like 
you know, like the typical owner that's going to go play golf, right? So you're playing golf. And, and frankly, like, I think most people are probably pretty average at golf. Like I can golf, but like after like pretty much whole 10, I'm kind of like, okay, like I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm so frustrated, you know, because I, I was good all the way up to the hole, but can't putt for hell. So I, you know, I ended up, you know, getting a double bogey right. and that gets old after a while. Right. And then, it, or also because it doesn't become very challenging. Right. So again, I think it's generation by generation, but if you're a baby boomer, your bill, one of your key values or your core values is success. Mm -hmm. So whether that's being a good father, a good business owner, a good golfer, you have a sense of wanting to feel successful. So if you think you're just going to sit around and do nothing and sit margaritas or travel the world or play golf, that's going to get probably old pretty quick. It's mm -hmm. funny that you had talk about this though, because literally I was sitting with my operations manager and our, our one of our uh, lead strategists here and they asked me, my, my team here at EPI is relatively young. They said, Scott, but if you sold, like if you could sell EPI, like what would you do? Like you're not even 40. I was like, funny that you should ask. And so because trying to live my own methodology, I have a written personal vision that I'm trying to live into that goes till about 55 right now, 55 years old. So, but it's written. Uh, I wouldn't say I would probably rate myself low here. I, it's written but it's not thorough, but I know, I know the trajectory of what I want to do with the exit planning Institute, my business. I, and I know what I would do after my business, at least till I'm 55. Mm -hmm. um, and I have my passions kind of written out. And if you, you know, the question, I think a lot of owners to your point that are spending a lot of time in their business, you know, if you didn't have your business to walk into 60 plus hours a week, what would you do with your time? Mm -hmm. I was on a call the other day with a, an owner that actually came through our SEPA program because he wanted to learn about what it takes to buy and grow a company. Little did I know is that he did it because he had free time because he had just sold his. And he called me afterwards and he's like, Scott, I'd love to schedule like a half hour phone call. I was like, cool. And he's like, I'm actually a retired owner, basically an exited owner that took your program because I'm literally in this transition law thing right now. Right. He called me and it was nine in the morning. He called me and I, he had the, the typical, you know, break the ice chat that everybody, how's the weather? What are you doing? And he's like, and I don't know, I, maybe I, I, maybe I had something interesting to say. I don't remember what I said. He's like, man, cause, but I do remember him saying, man, that's awesome. He's like, I'm literally in my basement alone. I'm divorced and I'm shooting pool. And I'm like, you're shooting, it's 9 AM. You don't have anywhere to be, nothing to do. He's like, no, I'm freaking pulling my hair out, man. Yeah. He's like, so I thought I'd call you as an exited owner. And as a person that teaches this stuff, like, Where's a good place for me to go? I mean, and again, this is a guy that got like $50 million for his business. So what, after taxes and fees, call it 30. Okay. He's got $30 million. This guy's in his like basketball shorts and crappy t-shirt playing pool in his basement all alone. You know, like that's a guy that profoundly regretted selling his business because right. he was like, the price tag looked great and it right. hit my wealth gap, but I don't know what I'm, I don't know what I want to do. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. So hundred percent.